Hi, I'm Cynthia Brubaker standing in uh, for Isaac Ben Ezra today, who usually does conversations. And Isaac will be back soon. He'll be taking over his moderating chair. But today we're going to focus on a topic that many of you are very interested in and some of you may be confused about because there are a lot of new terms and new things to learn about recycling. So today I'd like to welcome two guests, uh, Susan Waite, who is the Amherst Recycling Coordinator. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. And Karen Boquillen, who is the North Northampton Waste Management Supervisor. Welcome. Glad to be with you. Both of them are doing exceptional things in their communities to promote more recycling, better recycling. And we want to focus on that today, which is why you see these things, these props on the table here. Um, we're going to talk about the nitty gritty of recycling, but I wanted to start off first with the big picture and talk a little bit about how we're doing. You know, in the 70s, many of us really jumped into this and have been trying to, to keep up, but I think um, there are so many new things going on that we want to know about those. And one of the things that I've heard, one of the, the, the expressions or topics, is zero waste management which is a really big picture idea, but it's one that we should all learn more about. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it is a concept that's kind of difficult to wrap your head around because it seems so big. It's kind of like climate change or something. Like what can you actually do to impact waste? And uh, this particular movement, it, w it came out of the, the West Coast at first, but it's spreading rapidly. Um, corporations have really taken the lead. So there's many um, companies that are on the path to zero waste, basically reducing waste to its, um, its minimum mm -hmm. throughout their whole production cycle. And now municipalities are, are in, throughout the United States and throughout the world are adopting zero waste plans and goals and policies. And one thing about um, you know, there's kind of the upstream waste, so like by the time of a, a product gets to us, 70 times more waste has been produced. All the packaging and Yeah, before production. we even get it. So the if you... The manufacturing process. Yeah, yeah, so if you buy a kid's toy from China, 70% of the waste has already been produced, and you're left with this one little thing that you'll throw away after mm -hmm. your two-year-old two destroys it or whatever. Um, and there's a lot that governments are doing to encourage um, product stewardship. So companies actually taking responsibility for the proper uh, recycling, reuse, or disposal of their products. When um, you say that, that companies are taking responsibility, is there a financial incentive for companies to do this? Well, yes, obviously. If, if the corporations are taking the lead because they are saving money, by reducing their waste and you know being more efficient mm -hmm. in their um, their production, and also there's a there's a greening kind of um, uh, pro you know they use it for promotion with their customers. Um, there are certainly some government incentives for mm -hmm. them to be like tax advantages um, or probably not maybe. Um, there's certification programs and and other things like, for example, this is a good one actually with computers. Apple Computer decided to opt out of this certification program, which included recyclability of its products. Oh. And the government at all levels says said we can't buy Apple products anymore oh. if you're not involved in this program. Oh. So they actually um, went back and and decided that they were going to you know, rejoin the certification oh. process. So there's, you know, there are lots of incentives for them to participate. What, what about um, overseas? Like we do so much manufacturing now overseas and import it here. Um, and there's all the wrapping around it and the plastics. Mm -hmm. And how, how can we attack that on a global scale? Is it possible? Well, the, um, other parts of the world, especially Europe, are way ahead of us uh, with mm -hmm. reducing and eliminating packaging. And there are, there are some initiatives to make packaging more reusable, 
or eliminate, you know, reducing it, mm -hmm. making it more recyclable. Actually, mm -hmm. Walmart has, has been involved in a big program where they have essentially told their producers, we want you to give us less packaging. Mm -hmm. So th there's, there's some fun, exciting mm -hmm. movements in that direction. Thanks. So we'll talk uh, later in a minute about what individuals can do. And I'm thinking when I'm out shopping, is there any way that I can have an impact on companies like Walmart, or T Walmart, Target, or you know, big chains that are bringing us Best Buy, all this mm -hmm. stuff packaged? Can we? How can we have a voice in that? Well, I, I think the government is actually working on that. Um, I, I think it's hard for, you know, it's not like you can take something out of the package and give them the packaging yeah. back right there. Well, that would be Although nice. Although people have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good um, But idea. in Europe, that's what they do. They do give they? the packaging right. back. Ah. Um, oh, that's a good idea. I, I, go I ahead. think individuals definitely have a voice and, and should, should voice things whenever possible, even mm -hmm. if it's just to the person who's, who's at the point of sale. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this, is, this packaging is ridiculous, you know, uh, or write letters. Mm -hmm. You know, you can write, if you really are so enraged, you know, that, that, uh, and, and angry about it, write a letter to the company and say, you know, I support your product, your product is quality product, but this, this packaging has got to be Mm -hmm. You got to get better on the packaging. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I think that, um, and also go the other way. And when you see something that is really phenomenal that a company or a, a retail store is doing, mm -hmm. say something to them. Oh, and get say them something positive. Feedback. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that. we talked about Best Buy, and, mm -hmm. and while they sell a lot of electronics with lots of foam packaging and you know uh, all sorts of packaging they also are doing some really great things hmm. one of which is that they have a you want to explain <laughs> about their program the their Best electronics Buy? take back yeah, program yeah they, they take back any electronics whether they sold it or not oh you're anything with I a didn't screen know that. anything, yeah. with, anything a screen. with a screen and, and you can and take it to them yeah oh and they will Absolutely. take it and then hopefully they'll and they, yeah. they use responsible yeah. electronics recyclers yeah. that have been certified by, okay. yeah, it's That's great. That's a great yeah. idea. And so I, I agree with all that, but I also would like to add that we don't need necessarily have to buy everything new. There are a lot of mm. ways to buy um, things that are gently pre-used, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's free cycle, and there's a lot of mm -hmm. um, reuse organizations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stores where you can yeah. buy something that's perfectly functional and somebody else has already. That's yeah. right. Reconditioned I, lawn mowers. You know, yeah. you don't have to buy a new lawn mower. Or, or share it among yeah. your share neighborhood. It. We've there got a know. neighborhood group now that's just starting to do that, mm -hmm. to tell what we that's have. That's great. And we can share it. And I really have stopped buying, almost completely stopped buying new clothing. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the recycled clothing or secondhand clothing stores are the wave of the future, mm -hmm. that we should start doing that more. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like any kind of recycling. Right. So uh, zero waste management, so that's a goal. And are communities right. adopting that as a goal that they're working toward? Yeah, I think, um, you know, like both Amherst and Northampton have sustainability plans, mm -hmm. and it's a natural thing to, to add a zero waste um, policy and plan to something mm. like that. And the um, Environmental Protection Agency is working on a, a pretty major initiative this fall for the New England states to help municipalities put these tools into place and not, you know, not just have a plan that gets filed somewhere, but a real mm -hmm. action plan. So that would be something a recycling committee would look into mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. would follow up on. Mm -hmm. And would town councils and town meetings adopt a zero waste management plan? Mm -hmm. Is that how they would? Yeah, you'd probably that? set up a planning committee to look at specific actions that could oh. be taken. And, you know, in the long run, it's just going to save the municipality money. There's, you know, almost anything you can do with waste except bury it or burn it is going to be less expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something good to know that municipal, well, let's turn to this idea for a minute. How are we doing locally and regionally on recycling? What can we do better? Sure. Well, recycling or, or waste stream reduction or well, both? Well, uh, you'll have to explain yeah, waste stream okay, reduction. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, th the whole point of zero waste is to create, to, it's, it's an aspirational goal 
it's it's not something I don't know that anyone is ever going to achieve zero waste, but it's it's something to aspire to, and it's amazing what can be achieved when you have that goal in place. You want it, it's it's waste stream reduction is. When you think of all of the municipal solid waste that leaves your house and leaves your neighborhood, it's, it's finding a way to reduce that, that so that the amount that actually goes to the waste energy incinerator or the landfill is smaller. Mm -hmm. We have landfills in the region that are filling up, closing up, mm -hmm. and we have to start thinking about what are we going to do with the waste that we produce when all of our regional landfills are closed. Well, are we going to in Amherst we we have closed ours. Ours we? are we have two landfills and they've both been capped. Mm -hmm. Northampton has a landfill that is about to close. Yes, early when, early next year. And mm -hmm. what are you going to do then with Well, there's always a place to send waste away. Mm -hmm. Away um, <laughs> <laughs> to somewhere else for somebody yeah, else that's to right. deal with. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it's eventually got to yeah. be dealt with. Yes. So, so how yeah. when you close yours, well, are is that going to be a big expense to the community? Yeah, the, the landfill has provided some major subsidies to not only to our transfer stations and waste management programs, but to the city itself. So costs are, are going to increase. It's an income producer. Mm -hmm. and it, it, landfills? So the, their land, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. um, I've heard it said that landfills are a, um, a short-term income producer and a long-term expense, yeah. you know, because yeah. you do have to monitor it for many years afterwards. But while it's active, it can bring in a, a nice a nice chunk uh, of change. Yeah. And then when it goes away, people realize, oh, this waste is, there is an expense mm -hmm. <laughs> to this waste. Yeah. Yeah. But getting back to your question, um, you know, we have some really good models of mm -hmm. municipalities who are, who are reaching 70, 80 mm -hmm. percent In diversion. Well. Um, Yes, in the area, Leverett is probably in the oh, eighty percent range. Oh, that's great. Um, but that's San great. Francisco, which is a San really Francisco. large community, mm -hmm. I think they're at seventy eight right. percent. And that we have the infrastructure in in Western Massachusetts. It's ideal for getting there. First of all, the we have the regional materials recycling facility in Springfield. I've been there. Yes, that's quite impressive. It is, and now we have a new option. Right now, most municipalities are doing dual stream, so it's mixed containers, bottles and cans, and plastic and metal, and mixed paper mm -hmm. and cardboard. But they they do have the option now. Municipalities have the option now of doing single stream, which is putting it all together, which gets um, sorted later. So at yeah. your cur at curbside, mm -hmm. so putting they would take everything in one big container. Right. And because it's more convenient, you do, do get higher participation and capture yeah, rates I from think the that's public. True. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. would it go well, if you have that capacity? Where where would it go from your curb to um, to the spring? We call it the MRF, Murph. the Materials okay, Recycling Facility. There. There's 78 communities in that. Yeah, and it, we have a a really long-term successful program, mm. and it's unique in the state. Oh, um, yeah. and because we're we have um, kind of a, a rural environment, we also have the opportunity to do more composting, mm -hmm. um, food waste and non-recyclable paper and obviously yard and leaf waste. And mm -hmm. um, But that would take a really big chunk out of the waste mm -hmm. stream. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so when, you're, when you talk waste stream reduction and zero waste, you're trying to pull out all sorts of pieces from this pile of municipal solid waste. You mm -hmm. pull out the organics. Yep. Mm -hmm. You pull this out the recyclable problem. material. You can see this um, later. Mm -hmm. They'll be mm -hmm. zooming in. But when you look at all what makes up the waste stream, mm -hmm. really fully 80% of it can be diverted to a higher use. Wow. It, you know, textiles and mm -hmm. all kinds well, of, um, you know, construction and demolition materials. Yeah. Um, Metals, electronics. Well, I'm going to take electronics yeah. now to Best Buy. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. Those are really good it's tips. It's great. You know, and they, they started out the program on a kind of pilot basis, mm -hmm. and you would have to pay, and then they'd give you a gift certificate for the store. Oh, yeah. Um, and now it it's... It didn't work. They, uh, well, no. I'm, it did they work. just. I think that they they realized what a their response their corporate responsibility first of all, but then also what a great PR thing this oh, is yes. and gets people to yeah. come into their store. So, so just it's just a win-win yeah. in a lot Hearing of ways. Hearing that, I'm 
Well, let me let's yeah. talk about some of these things to make sure we get them in. This uh -huh. is the the ever present foam cup, which is made out of styrofoam, and expanded poly styrene. And very, 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 very cheap to buy. Cheap mm -hmm. and very terrible to have in landfills or in any kind of uh, waste. Well, fly. there's a there's an argument there's an argument there, there's. Um, it's it, in some respects it's not terrible because it's considered inert and it doesn't uh -huh. do anything. But that's part of the reason why you don't why having a landfill is not great is because it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. This um, only photo degrades, which means that with light it will eventually break into smaller pieces, but it doesn't ever biodegrade. Mm -hmm. And in a landfill, there's no light. Mm -hmm. This is also very lightweight because it's polystyrene with air blown into it. Mm -hmm. And it, it creates a lot of volume, which fills up our landfills mm -hmm. quickly um, and uh, just sits there. If it's sent to an incinerator, yeah. which something like 60%, I think, of Massachusetts municipal mm -hmm. solid waste oh. gets incinerated at a waste to energy incin uh -huh. incineration facility. If it gets incinerated, then all of this stuff potentially can go into the air. Oh, they right. do have filters and stuff and some of it is captured but mm -hmm. but there's some controversy over how much is actually captured. So so it's just it's the kind of thing that we can easily avoid yeah, having yeah. in our waste stream, so why not avoid do it? Do it. Okay, well it's cheap. We've learned that. And people get these when they go to for takeout. Mm -hmm. And I see I didn't even know the name of this was clamshell. Uh -huh. These are called clamshells. Uh -huh. And so I just thought they were food containers or takeout containers. And this one we get a lot, mm -hmm. which is recyclable. recyclable. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But okay, so here is the lay person who goes to get takeout or is at a restaurant and gets food. What is good and what's bad, and how do you know what it is? What do you know? You know, how do you know if what is sure. good and bad? Well. <laughs> Things aren't black and white. Oh dear. That's, that's it's, one thing. I, I think it's it's really a continuum. There's yeah. uh -huh. preferable choices and um, poor choices. This is poor. Because styrofoam it's pretty styrofoam. much is, is it's not recyclable. Mm -hmm. It's not compostable. It's always trash. Okay. Actually, it, with the exception, yeah. we are starting some um, pilot styrofoam collections in mm -hmm. this area. Mm -hmm. um, but I in Northampton we've we've been doing this and it's just to demonstrate the need especially for those large styrofoam shapes chunks oh chunks. yeah that which comes in you know, it's packaging it's, and yeah so yeah. but what we really need is a, a local solution but you know these um, these are really disposable or yeah. they are i mean some people the the um, polystyrene foam industry would mm -hmm. argue they are recyclable the the problem is that food is considered a contaminant mm -hmm. and when you think about the low melting po point of plastic in order to clean food and oil residue off plastic you have to get some heat in there and it's a lot of work and yeah. it's a, so it makes it more it difficult to be able to recycle it. What about it, if you had... It can be recycled yeah. it's not economically feasible to mm -hmm. do so. Oh, there are, okay. You have to... Sh I mean like, like the... the, the pilot programs that Karen has mentioned, the stuff gets shipped either to Rhode Island or yeah. to, to um, Eastern mm -hmm. Mass. Right. And it's like, this weighs nothing, and so to mm -hmm. ship it, it's, it costs far, far more than throwing it away. So and it's just not feasible. We're going to something like this is a clamshell, but mm -hmm. this is compostable. So w the movement is away from styrofoam. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's definitely we. That's you know, a trend we'd like to see more. We'd of. like to see more <laughs> of. But this is something that you. This paper, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and you can and restaurants. Some restaurants are using these now, already. right? And this is it's a low grade pressed paper, mm -hmm. so it breaks down easily in a compost environment, especially at a commercial composting facility where they usually chip it first before oh, uh -huh. it gets mm -hmm. um, cooked well, in you the could compost. do this in a backyard composting pile just but tearing it, it. Tearing yep it. yep these this is styrofoam right? that's styrofoam I mean the, the, you can tell oh. that because it's so light yeah it's also well it's, technically it's expanded polystyrene oh, okay. because styrofoam is a 
copyrighted term it's that they use in the, in the construction industry. Mm -hmm. oh. But everyone, you know, it's like Kleenex. Everyone calls yeah, it styrofoam. Calls it styrofoam. <laughs> and so this is styrofoam. We call it foam as a as an easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is star. Uh, this uh, is poly foam. Yep. expanded polystyrene. Yep. EPS. EPS. Mm -hmm. This and is foam. And then these are. You said one of these was bad. One was good. How do you tell? Well, and that's where you know. Um, this, this is a tough situation because food uh, food sellers want to, the food to look as attractive as possible. So they're trying they're wanting to be more responsible and instead of using plastic, which um, which is recyclable, these clamshells are recyclable. Um, there, there's a whole trend towards compostable material. Mm -hmm. So this one is actually compostable and oh. this is recyclable. And you think, oh, well, that's really great that yeah. there's compostable. But the problem is that the plastics industry doesn't like the compostable one because it contaminates <laughs> their resin. It contaminates their plastic oh base. And they look the same. And they yeah, look they exactly do. the same. That's so, so it's 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 a it's a good choice if you're if you're if you have a, a composting program and it's in place, but it's a not as good if if you have a if you have a really good recycling program because mm -hmm. everyone's going to be throwing these into the recycling bin. Mm. So it, it complicates things, and that's why it's just easier to use identifiable like things these. like this. Yeah. Like this, um, uh, aluminum is highly highly recyclable. Mm -hmm. It's a the good, highly good sought recyclable. after. That's right. Now that's on the right. bottom of this, you see the little recycling thing. Mm -hmm. Is that how you tell if something's recyclable? You want to we, field we, this one? <laughs> well, we, we do not go by the numbers. There's only seven numbers, but there's really thousands of types of oh. plastic resins. So. A number one water bottle and a number one clamshell yeah. are two different types of resin. This has a six. Well, on it. has a six. It's but you can have you could have a clear clamshell that look that's a number one too. Oh. The 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 recycling symbols people call them recycling symbols, but it's one of the biggest misnomers in the waste industry. The whole system was created by the plastics industry oh. as a resin identification system. And at the time, they chose to use the chasing arrows as part of their symbol. Mm -hmm. And the chasing arrows were not uh, regulated at that time. I don't think they still are. They're still not regulated. So they chose to use those symbols in the 1980s or whenever this resin system was formed. Mm -hmm. So when people see those symbols, they think that means yes, recyclable. I did. But it, <laughs> but in this case, it doesn't. Oh, so dear. there are certain plastic resins that are much more coveted so than others. So I'll give it. There's two kind of good guidelines. Okay. Um, food, beverage, and detergent containers. So detergent being like shampoo and you know like mm -hmm. laundry detergent and any kind of cleaning products. Those would all be recyclable. Mm -hmm. Food, beverage, food. And then um, it's you, you'll see this later, but it's bottles, jars, jugs, and tubs. And this would be considered a, a tub. Mm -hmm. um, so that um, eliminates some things like, uh, well, nothing over two gallons. So right, like your, right. um, you know, five gallon bucket or uh, mm -hmm. th those would not be recyclable. Yep. And so, she's, so she's talking about recyclable yeah, and then we get into the, the whole compostable. compostable realm, which is, which is also great because that just turns back into really great mm -hmm. uh, soil um, augmentation for for farmers and for gardens and landscapers so so ideally you know you have to think about the whole kind of stream mm -hmm. how much energy and resources does it take to produce the product how much energy and resources does it take to ship and move it around mm -hmm. and then how what happens to it at the end of its life cycle mm -hmm. so people can argue that styrene um, expanded polystyrene is um, very energy efficient to produce on the front end. Mm, mm -hmm. Whereas some would say, well, it is true that even a paper product, you have to ch chip, you know, if you go mm -hmm. from raw material, you have to chip it, pulp it, yeah, um, you know, clean it, it um, press it. So there is a lot, some would argue that there's a lot more to this. And it is, you know, and it's true. But then on the other end, after it's been used, what happens to it? This goes into a landfill and fills up a, a mm -hmm. rapidly mm -hmm. filling landfill. This can get recycled and, or I'm sorry, not recycled, composted yeah. 
Right. Um, and and um, it, its end of life is just much less mm -hmm. harmful. Mm -hmm. to the it turns for into the environment. a soil more sustain yeah. yeah, it's more sustainable. One, one thing I, I could mention that if you're in any restaurant and you yeah. want to avoid the styrofoam, you can always ask for a, a piece of aluminum foil. Every mm -hmm. restaurant has aluminum yeah. foil, and I've then started doing that. Um, mm -hmm. So you always have. Mm -hmm. um, a green option. And but the aluminum foil is recyclable. Yes. What Especially about if you this, rinse though? it. If you're uh, going to get a cup of coffee at various places, I won't name um, them. You can <laughs> bring your own. <laughs> oh, and you can give it to them and ask them to fill it? Um, Does that work? Some places yes, will, some places will. And are there right. things that they can give you instead of this? At, at well, the talk about individual action. You say, I love your coffee, but I would I don't like this cup. Oh, just let Can you know. get me another cup? Uh, oh, there are okay. some, there's one place in particular that I know about that has smaller cups in paper. It's just the larger cups oh, that they the, don't have oh, okay. um, in paper. They only have them in, in the foam. And, you know, if more people made the request, they would mm -hmm. they would eventually mm -hmm. get the get the message. And, you know, we, we, we are going to have to go back to the basics. Like, why, you know, we carry around plastic water bottles all the time mm -hmm. now, which mm -hmm. adds to landfill problems. Mm -hmm. and, well, uh, those are recyclable, but a lot yeah. of them do get discarded. Yeah, a mm -hmm. lot of them. And, you know, we're, why not just take your cup with you everywhere, mm -hmm. your own thermos, get yourself a thermos. Mm -hmm. And go, you know, we've got to somehow make the mind shift mm -hmm. that we've got to, st mm -hmm. I even, I try, I'm really aware of this now, but I'm still, Used so to, absolutely. you know, just, you know. And it's confusing. It like home. I said, it's not black and white. Uh, there's, there's, there's like a continuum. Yeah. So when you say what things should we look for as a restaurant owner, what mm -hmm. things should we go for, you know, you, you, there's recyclable and there's compostable and there's has to go in the garbage. So clearly, if we can get rid of the stuff that has to go in the garbage, yeah. that's a really great first step. Well, we're going to put some um, websites up of both of your places at, at the DPWs in Northampton and in uh, Amherst. People can go online and read. You can go to the MRF site. Mm -hmm. I learned an awful lot by going, what does MRF stand for? Materials Recycling Facility. Materials Recycling Center, and that's in Springfield. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of information on mm -hmm. their site. Mm -hmm. And start educating you know, yourself about it. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. on, on both of our websites, there's a link to this publication that came out mm -hmm. for Earth Day. And it has an A to Z guide of what to do with oh, everything. Great. That's, so, I've got and that it at also home. has um, a very good listing of all the reuse um, mm -hmm. shops and organizations in the area, um, municipal contact information. Mm -hmm. okay. Is this a real well? On that's on which site? It, well, on both. We have oh, a have link it on to your it. Um, it was put out by the Gazette, and it's mm -hmm. also. Available there. And we're running, we're now almost out of time. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to say one thing about Amherst, and I know Northampton is also thinking about this, mm -hmm. is some sort of um, policy or something written into their bylaws about banning uh, the poly styrene. Foam products from, from uh, disposable, from our restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, the Recycling and Refuse Management Committee in Amherst has been working with the League of Women Voters and the Hitchcock Center um, uh, towards a ban of foam products in their restaurants. They conducted a casual survey and found that only 40% of the restaurants in Amherst even use foam. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a fairly easy sell. Styrene has been um, recently uh, identified by the National Toxicology Program as a, a carcinogen. Mm. Um, so there's mm -hmm. lots of reasons people don't know and they put it in their microwave. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of reasons, health and landfill um, and incineration wise, th that it would be good to get it out of well, our Well, I think stream. that will be coming up at the town meeting. We're hoping for a warrant mm -hmm. article in the fall. Mm -hmm. And I know Northampton is thinking about doing the mm -hmm. same thing at their council. Um, anyway, we're out of time, <laughs> and this goes by so quickly. But I'd like to thank you, Susan and Karen, for coming and uh, talking about this. Mm -hmm. And we've got so much more we could talk about, but we'll maybe have another program. <laughs> um, and thank you, Amherst Media and Candace Johnson and the wonderful interns that do the camera work. Um, thank you for, for tuning in, and we hope that you'll join us again for conversations. Thank you.